theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight's story is a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Here's a preview. It's no joke. This is the government in exile of Royal Grandomir, three native Grandomirsky whose mission in life is to restore the king of Grandomir to the throne of his fathers. What king? Uh, me. Oh, for Pete's sake. This isn't funny, Alfred. Indeed it is not, Miss Gordon. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Andy Griffith. La Cuillère Gracieuse is a restaurant whose only distinction is that James Beard once threw a brick through its window. The service can be timed by using the calendar opening in your watch. And what the menu lacks in variety, it makes up in awfulness. But it's a private place to talk, and some people like it for just that reason. Like these two, Alfred and Jill. I haven't seen the waiter in almost an hour. Isn't that nice? I'll have to give him a really big tip. You do that. Alfred, do you think this relationship has a future? Oh, sure. A long, happy one. Don't we already measure time and anniversaries? Three months today since you came to sell me insurance. Two months and 29 days since our first date. Seven weeks since the big ski weekend. Six weeks since you made dinner for the first time. And four weeks since we knew we were in love for sure. And an hour since we saw the waiter. <laughs> that brings us back to the present. And the question of our future. Uh, Jill. Am I rushing you? No, it's just, uh, we haven't met each other's families yet. I, I just got my mother. What have you got? Mother and father. Can I meet them this weekend? They live in Paris. Paris, France? Oh, how neat. Would they like me? Oh, they'd love you. There's no, that's no problem. Well, then. But there is a problem, and I haven't worked out how to... I have to explain something to you. Explain away. Uh, I can't right now. I have an appointment in 15 minutes. Flag the waiter, will you, love? This should cover his really big tip, I think. Okay. Call me tonight? Sure thing. You can explain your problem then. Right. I'll explain my problem then. <laughs> See you. And that's just the beginning of our story. Here's Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of the Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Crown Jewels of Grand Omir, by Gene O'Brien. Our stars, Stephen Markle and Joan McCall. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. Now let's go to Alfred's bachelor flat and meet his problem. The three men who live with him and who sleep in the two sofa beds and the rollaway cot that make the living room so crowded, especially when you add a dinette table and four chairs. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present General Boris Brontoslav. He's the soldierly middle-aged man at the head of the table. Next to him is Baron Vladimir Artigorsk. An elegant, even courtly man in his 30s. The little round man is Minibot, whose first name nobody ever bothered to learn. Now, on the wall behind Rontoslav's head hangs a map of Eastern Europe with a flagged pin stuck in it and an area outlined in red. Over the map hangs a flag displaying the royal arms of Grandemir on a green field. We will now find out why these men present a problem to Alfred Grant, that rising young insurance agent. The meeting of the government in exile of Royal Grandmere will come to order. We will rise and sing the national anthem. Oh, Grandmere, fair Grandmere, we love her hill and heather, her wally to and river blue, her fair and cloudless weather. Dear Grandmere, our native land, we will forever cherish her fold of us till I shall close and all who hate her perish beautiful be, be seated gentlemen <laughs> Baron Altidorf you read the minutes of the last meeting <laughs> they are brief General Brantoslov has not heard from our men in Grandomir Baron Artigorsk has not been able to interest the CIA in financing the king's return 
And Minnie Bai hasn't done anything about the coronation. I have to. I send the robes to cleaners. They'll be back next week. That's all. I had the polish for the crown jewels, but I haven't had time to do them up. I've got a lot to do around here, and nobody else turns a hand. We have our own work, Minnie Bai. You know, counter-revolutions don't make themselves. Just because I was a valet and Artigorsk was the king's equity, he thinks he doesn't have to pick up after himself. And you leave the basin full of whiskers, Carol. All right, all right. We, we try to be neat. The neater. king makes his own bed. The king hangs up his clothes. The king leaves the bathroom fit for humans to use. You've made your point, Minibai. Father, the king will be here soon. Perhaps we should adjourn the meeting so Minibai can set the table. Now, Artigos can set the table. I have to make the salad. All right. What are we having for dinner? Lamb stew. Again? Have you noticed the price of beef lately? The king hates lamb stew. But it's his mother's own recipe. That's why he hates it. Open up in there. Oh, the king? king? Just a minute, your majesty. His infinite majesty, Alfred the Dirty. Grandomir. Welcome, sire. Your Majesty's briefcase, please? Your Majesty looks tired. Did you have a hard day? Oh, about average, Minabai. Brontoslav, about this business of announcing me every time I come home, it's a little florid apartment, don't you think? This isn't the royal palace in Grandomir. It is etiquette, Your Majesty. We must preserve the little decencies of life. That means you're not going to change? No, sire. Then let's have dinner. I'm starved. Artigorsk is Majesty's chair. There's your Majesty's plate, please. Not lamb stew again. Whatever happened to beef? On my budget, beef is out of the question, sire. Even fish is a luxury. It is Queen Beatrice's own recipe. God, God bless, bless Queen Beatrice. Beatrice. Thank you, gentlemen. She was an ornament to the throne. And a menace in the kitchen. Sire, she was the finest cook in Grandomir. She taught me everything I know. My point exactly. Sire, we had a meeting before you came home. Another meeting? Brontoslav, when are you going to face facts? The Grandomirsky don't care who rules them, just so the stamp money comes in and the goats flourish. But, Sire... They stood in the square and heard Petrogny claim my father's overthrow without a sound for or against. In two years, they've had time to think, Your Majesty. Who tells you what they think? Our man in Grandomir. He thinks we have a very good chance. I doubt that. Look, Hartigorsk went to the CIA, and what happened? Nothing. If we had oil, it might be different. Who's going to come to the rescue of commemorative stamps? My advice to you three is to get jobs and forget the counter-revolution. I'm a gentleman, sire. I wasn't raised to work with my hands. And I wasn't raised to sell insurance. May I get a charge out of being independent and having a good credit rating? And I look forward to having my own agency someday. That's all the kingdom I need. Is there coffee, Minabai? I'll bring it, Your Majesty. Uh, credit rating, sire... You mean you could borrow? It wouldn't take much. We could pay it back out of the first issue of stamps after we finally... Out of the question, public expenses count for every penny of the stamp income. Now, let's drop the subject, Minabai. I have a business appointment tonight, and I'll be late. Don't forget to leave the chain off the door. Uh, sire, think of your people who, who groan under the yoke of the oppressor. Uh, peasants always sound like that. So would you if you spend all your time with goats. Listen to me, but on Toslav, a counter-revolution is a waste of time. You didn't hear a word I said, did you? Oh, yeah, every word, sire. Hell and damnation, it's uh, like talking to a wall. All right, then. It's your time, and if you want to waste it, go ahead. You made him mad. He said all right, didn't he? He really wants to be king. He just doesn't want to say so. He used to try on the crown when he was a little boy. It came down over his ears. The crown, the jewels, they are our collateral. Well... Going to borrow on the crown jewel? Really, boy, start polishing. I'll write to our man in Grandomir. Republic of Grandamir meets in the throne room of the former royal palace, whose paneled walls are hung with portraits of his rulers and their families. Leonid Petrovny, formerly the royal librarian and now leader of the revolution, hopes someone will suggest that his picture should hang there. But so far, his hints have fallen on deaf ears. Right now, he and Ivan Zaragorsk, who was a postal employee before the revolution, 
are waiting for the third member of the Central Committee to join us. She's always late. Let me see that Russian letter again. Why? You already know what's in it. They don't hold out any hope? No. How about the Chinese letter? Same thing, all in Chinese. Could the translator have made a mistake? It was just one word long. No! The Russians at least wrote the whole sentence. They meant no, just the same. Am I late? I just stopped by the post office to pick up the mail. Was there anything for me? No, but I got a letter from Alfred. Did you know the press has broken down again? I know. The first day of the new issue is only a month off. I know that, too. I also know there is no money to pay for repair. Oh, well, they'll trust us. They always have. Rivagni wants his money up front this time. That's ridiculous. Can you explain to him that if we don't print stamps, we can't make money? Several times. Well, what about the money from the Royal Stamp Album? Gone. Gone? For what, for Pete's sake? Revolutionary activity. Such as? Two cases of vodka to Copra Pirashkik so he could corrupt the army. So they'd be too drunk to resist us. <laughs> Probably drunk most of it himself. I made that Molotov cocktail with my own hands and told him to throw it at the palace. Instead, he hit the post office, the fool. Well, he paid for it, drowning in the fountain like that princess. Comrade, I'm not a princess anymore. Not that we aren't glad to have you with us, comrade princess, but why did you join the revolution? To raise the status of women in Grandemir. Couldn't you have done that as a princess? My mother wouldn't let me. She said, princesses don't do that. Honestly, any time I wanted to do anything, it was, princesses don't do that. She did everything else. So I stole the royal stamp album and... Look, comrade, we're sorry you didn't get along with your mother, but you weren't the only one. You even had to put off the revolution till she went to Paris to see how your father was doing. <laughs> what he was doing, you mean? I'll bet she was mad when she found out. She was madder when I phoned your father to tell him he'd been dethroned. She nearly broke my eardrum. Who'd have thought a queen would know words like that? She feels better now that she's got a job. A job? Doing what? In some kind of boutique, Daddy says. Let's get back to the question of paying for the press repairs. Don't look at me. I stole the stamp album. It's time Daryl Gorsk had an idea. Uh-huh. Ah, th that portrait of you on the wall over there, Comrade Princess. Are those pearls real? Of course they are. Well, why can't we sell them? Because Mother took them to Paris with her to be restrained. Oh. And the crown jewels are in America with Prince Alfred. Ah, uh -huh, that's my fault. I should have caught that little sneak mini by before he got to them. He said he needed a clean handkerchief and, like a fool, I let him go upstairs. But the jewels in the robe must have made quite a bundle. Didn't you notice? Mm hmm. He said he had a cold. Wonderful. Which would be easiest to get to, the crown jewels or the pearls? America is farther away. No, Paris means tangling with Queen Beatrice. That's right. America would be best. Could we find your brother in America, comrade? Easily. I have his home address, and he sent me his business card. <laughs> Imagine Alfred selling insurance. Uh, it's only a blind. He's just biding his time. He keeps the jewels in a bank, I suppose. Apparently uh, not. He writes that Minibai is polishing the jewels. That means he's got them right there. Poor boy. He probably likes to look at them while he dreams of being a king. Planning a counter-revolution, more likely. Remember, he's got Brontosnaf with him, and that man hates me. He'd like nothing better. Well, we than... better get busy then. If we can't get the press running, Brontosnaf could walk all over us. I shudder to think of it. Oh. It'll be nice to see Alfred again, even if we're going to steal from him. When do we start? Comrade, we can't all go. But why not me? I finance this revolution, and Zeragorsk gets to go to America? I've always wanted to see Disneyland. Look, you'll be chairman pro tem while we're gone. You'll like that, won't you? Hmm. Chairman Grandemir. It does have a nice ring. I said chairman pro tem. And you can raise the status of women while we're gone. That's right, I can. How long will it take you? Well, a week is all the time we have. Ten days at the outside. Well, okay, then. Have a nice trip and tell Alfred I said hello. <laughs> Zaragorsk have made it to America and are staking out Alfred's apartment. 
Brontosloff and company have tried several times to raise money on the crown jewels, and Alfred, having chickened out on six attempts to tell Jill what we have already learned about his background, is about to blow the seventh. They're in Jill's apartment this time. There's more pie if you'd like it. No, thanks. I made it myself from scratch. Best I ever tasted. My mother's pastry, on the other hand, made a good weapon. So much for small talk. What's on your mind, Alfred? You start sentences and uh, leave them dangling. And you look as if they just set the date to hang you. Sorry. So I won't see the bulldog. What's bothering you? Spit it out. Jill, you don't know the really important thing about me. Well, I know you're young and healthy and solvent. And tongue-tied. Believe me, Jill, I've tried to tell people about my problem and it makes them laugh. I couldn't bear it if you did. On my honor, Alfred, I won't laugh. When I first came to this country... What do you mean? Aren't you an American? No. When I first came... You've got a perfectly ordinary accent. Are you Canadian? No. I had an American governess. Mother didn't like the English, but she wanted me to know the language. Governess? Are your parents wealthy? No, but they felt they owed it to their position. This is where people begin to laugh. And what, for heaven's sake? At me, when I tell them that my father was a king until the revolution. That's not funny, Alfred. You'd be surprised at the people who think it is. What I think is that you don't want to marry me, and this cock and bull story is your way of getting out of it. Uh, all right, then. Maybe it's show and tell time. We'll go to my place and test if seeing is really believing. Get your coat. It's still raining. On this cold, rainy evening, Petrogny and Zaragorsk have been watching Alfred's flat for two hours. The wind blows the rain into the doorway where they've been huddled. They're a little short with each other. Here they come, Zirovorsk. All three of them. And the jewel. I recognize the case. You keep saying that. I know it's the jewel case. Why do they always take them with them when they go out? How should I know? It would be so much easier if we could sneak in and take the case when they were away. We don't suppose they're on to us. Maybe. I guess we'll just have to go in there with them. I guess so. Look, why don't we have something to eat first? Ah, uh, cold feet. Of course not, but I fight better with something in my stomach. Brace yourself, Jill. I'm braced. <laughs> but this better be good, friend. Open up in there. The king... Uh, just a minute, Your Majesty. What did he say? His Infinite Majesty, Alfred the Thirteenth. Grand me. Welcome, Your Majesty. Your coat, sire. Oh, my lady. Jill, my problem. From left to right, General Brontoslav, Baron Artigorsk, and Minibai. This is Miss Gordon, gentlemen. Miss Gordon. A pleasure, Miss Gordon. Oh, yes, indeed. His Majesty has never brought a lady home before. Alfred, is this some kind of a joke? Oh, please sit down, Jill, and don't talk. I mean, buy wine for us all. Gentlemen, I brought Miss Gordon here tonight especially to meet you. I think that if she sees you before her, my story will seem less fantastic. How? I see three actors you've apparently hired to, to play an elaborate practical joke. It's no joke. This is the government in exile of Royal Grandomere, three native Grandomirsky whose mission in life is to restore the king of Grandomere to the throne of his fathers. What king? Uh, me. Oh, for Pete's sake. This isn't funny, Alfred. Indeed it is not, Miss Gordon. His majesty became king when his father abdicated. Ridiculous. First of all, there's no such place as Grandomere. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, there is, Miss Gordon. Right on the map behind you, see the flag? If you look just to the right of it, you can see Grandomir outlined in red. Oh, where? Oh, yes, I see it now. So? My father was Alfred, the 12th Grandomir until the revolution. It's a people's republic now. I didn't read about any revolution in the papers. And it wasn't on TV. Nobody got shot. Oh. The queen had locked up all the ammunition before she left. Left? To join my father in Paris. I'd just driven her down the road so that she could catch the bus to Belgrade. Queen? Take buses? Uh, Grand Amir isn't big enough for an airport. Anyway, I just got back and was driving around the palace to put the car away when Brontoslav came running out to say that Petrogny, he was the royal librarian, was leading a revolution and we must flee. Just like that. Well, I blame myself. If I had to remember to ask the queen for the key to the ammunition closet. Just out of curiosity, why would she lock it up? Her majesty hates loud noises. 
Well, of course, we were not expecting trouble, but still... It I wasn't think... your fault, Bruntorslav. Who expects librarians to turn revolutionary? I didn't believe him, Jill, until I saw the post office in flames and Artogorsk and Minabai came running toward us. So we all got into the car and fled. When we got to the seacoast, we sold the car and bought four berths on a freighter and came here. And that's all. And you really expect me to believe this garbage? It's all true, Miss Gordon. And when we mount our counter-revolution... Again with the counter-revolution, Brontoslav, I thought I told you. You said if we wanted to waste our time, sire. We don't think it's a way. I'll talk to you later, Brontoslav. And now, having made enough of a fool of myself for one evening, I'll take Miss Gordon home. Minabai, will you bring our coats? Yes, Your Majesty. Oh, you don't give up, do you? What do you mean? <laughs> Alfred, my father was a bookkeeper to the day he died. My mother loved him just the way he was. He didn't have to pretend. For he... heaven's sake, girl, I've told you the truth. We all have. Minabai, where are those coats? I'm coming, sire. I, I can't persuade Miss Gordon. You see, Miss Gordon, here are the coronation robes. They just came back from the cleaners. Isn't the velvet lovely? And, and the ermine? You can see where his majesty should want the tales at his father's coronation. Teething, you know. And we have the crown jewels right here. Look, let me get them out. He's the king's crown. And the queen's. It would look lovely on you, Miss Gordon. And the order to St. Alfred of Grandubin... His and hers. And the orb. And finally the scepter. Well, I didn't think of that. They look real. Oh, they are real. Even if those dolts we've shown them to can't tell. You've been showing them to dolts, Brontosla? Why? Uh, uh, to raise money for the counter-revolution, sire. We tried the bank first, but they said they don't lend money on revolutions. And then two long companies, and, and, and finally a pawn shop. They tried to tell us the jewels weren't real. How such incompetence stay in business? They're not incompetence. The jewels are false. <laughs> false, sire? You mean they're not real? Yes, I mean they're not real. I just couldn't find the words to break it to you. He has trouble that way. Gosh. Gentlemen, the kings of Grandemere have been replacing the jewels in the regalia with paste for a long time now. One jewel at a time. But, sire, one... To combat inflation. To build a road, a new ram for the goat herd every now and then. But mostly, I'm afraid, to finance their mistresses. I was so proud. I risked my life for them. It was still very brave, Minabai, and if I were king, I'd make you a baron at the very least. May I say something? Another joke, I suppose. No. I want to say I'm sorry I was so rude. But how often does a middle-class American girl open a door and find herself in Ruritania? You're starting up again. No, I'm not. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I'm trying to use a light touch. I accept your apology. And the rest of you, I made cheap shots, and I owe it to my upbringing. You think to... nothing of it, Miss Gordon. Queen Jill. It, it doesn't have a real grandomisk sound. It will when we get used to it. Have you forgotten? The counter-revolution is dead. So am I. He was my whole life. Mine, too. If I seem to repeat myself, I'm sorry, but... General, you can get a job. Fuck. You too, Baron. I only know how yeah. to be an equity. There isn't much call. I think it would be nice to open a I restaurant. Well, well everybody, please, anything. shut up! The king is speaking. Oh, that's the way I like to hear him talk. Go, go sire, the go. The man has to do around here to make himself heard. Now, I've... Forgotten what I was going to say. Well, while you think about it, uh, shall I tell you what convinced me that you were telling the truth? The crown jewels? They helped. <laughs> on the other hand, there was the detail about the queen taking the bus. I was sure you were putting me on there. So what did change your mind? Well, there was the chewed ermine tail on the coronation robe. It was such a homely detail. And I've been watching you all. The general is really heartbroken. Artigos, too, and Minibai. His every word and gesture shows that he knows you well and is devoted to you. Oh, I spent my life in His Majesty's service, Miss Gordon, ever since he was a little prince. That's what I was going to say. Oh, in the name of the people's republic of Grandomir. Now, what the devil? That's Petrogny's wife. Oh, 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 on the table, the jewel. Oh, no, you don't, oh, Petrogny. I'll get you if you're so obstinate. Oh, 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 get into the bedroom. Oh, Quick, Miss Gordon, take the jewels. The bedroom's over there. Go on and say now, for the ground over there. Oh, 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 oh. A fight 
show. And the living room is a shambles. Victors and vanquished sit, breathing heavily on what chairs are left unbroken. Here comes Jill from the kitchen with a basin full of wet towels. Andy Griffith again, and here's the concluding act of the crown jewels of Grandamy. <laughs> Nightingale, moving among the wounded. I like the Red Cross in a disaster area. I need a drink. Minabai, is there any wine left? Yes, sire, but all the glasses got broken in the battle. No, I'll drink out of the bottle. General, here's a cold towel for your eye. I'm sorry, but I couldn't find any eyes. Thank you, thank you. And a towel for you, Baron. And one for... Let's uh, see, you're for Trogny, aren't you? Yes, uh, ma'am. Wipe the cut, and I'll see if there's a Band-Aid anywhere. Uh, hey, Alfred, where's the bathroom? Over there. Is there a Gorse still out? Is that his name? Yes. Uh, oh, good. He's coming around. Uh, now, all we've got are cuts and bruises, and I can uh, take care of them. Uh, I'm afraid the doctor would report this brawl to the police. Uh, uh, Your Majesty, may I have a, a word with you, please? Any word, but on Tozlov, except yes. revolution. Uh, when the battle began, Your Majesty, I heard you give the ancient battle cry. <laughs> God and St. Alfred for the Grand Amiers. Uh. And I knew... I've been right all along. About what? Uh, about, well, you know, but, but, but if I can't say the word, I'll have to. Alfred the 13th Grandomir, your kingdom is restored. You know, Brontoslav, you have a problem. There's no connection between your ear and your brain. Am I uh, interrupting something? I'd like to check His Majesty for wounds suffered in the great battle. I'm all right. Miss Gordon, may I be the first to hail... Queen Jill of Grandomir. God bless their majesty. Mm. What's this? Oh, I do congratulate your majesty. She's such a nice young lady. Uh, but Brantoslo, Artigo, she won't be queen until they're married. That's like hollering down a well. Are you going somewhere, Petrogny? Uh, well, there's nothing for us to do here. Yes, there is. We have to talk. What about? The future. If Jaragorsk is well enough, that is. Uh... I think so, Your Majesty. In any case, it'll be a change for me to talk to people who listen without interrupting and uh, take in what they hear. Minabai, are you sure there are no more glasses? Uh, jelly glasses, if Your Majesty doesn't mind. Oh, they'll do fine. Get them and start pouring. Everybody else, sit down. Oh. I'll begin with a formal declaration to the effect that I now abdicate the throne of Grandamere. Oh, oh, Tozlav, if you open your mm. mouth... I, I won't, I won't, Your Majesty, I won't. Ear trouble again, Von Tozlav? I said I abdicate. I'm Mr. Grant now. Alfred, to old friends like you. And Dr. Gorsk and Minabai, of course. Uh, yes, Your Ma Your Alfred. That's better. Now, Petrogne, uh, suppose you tell us what you had in mind when you came here this evening. Well, as a matter of fact, we came to steal the crown jewels, Your Majesty. Oh, uh, you can call me Mr. Grant. This may disappoint you after your trouble, but the jewels are worthless. All paste. Uh, worthless? Uh, paste? I told the others just before you joined us. Anyway, well, why should you want them? Well, Grandomir has no source of income. What do you mean, no source of income? You should be issuing the new stamps in a few weeks. The press keeps breaking down. It hasn't been the same since the Roskik set fire to the post office in the revolution. Now Grivogny says he won't release it until he gets his money. Grivogny's a thief, and you shouldn't let him get away with that. My father never did. I haven't his majesty's force of character. But you have to have the stamps. You see, Jill, the economy of Grandamere is based on commemorative stamps. Collectors all over the world buy them. I see. Petrogny... If I lend you the money for Grivogny, can you make your deadline? How much do you need? Fifteen hundred Alfreds. That's highway robbery. He never charged my father more than seven fifty. Didn't you haggle with him? We haven't got seven fifty. We did have, but we used it to pay our fare here. As a gamble, you know. <laughs> Here's the wine, sir. You're supposed to call me Alfred. It makes me feel shy. Alfred. You'll get used to it. Now, do you think you can find my checkbook? And, Brontoslav, will you look up the rate of exchange? That's yeah. kind of you. Are you sure you can spare it? If he can't, I'll help. I got paid today. Oh, I've got the figures here. It's $110. Uh, I can just make it. I hope that nobody ever finds out that the revolution was saved by the royalists. We never leave it down. Here you are, Pesogny. Now, stand your ground with Grilogny. Don't take any nonsense from him, man. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Shall we go? We might as well. Your secret is safe with us. I don't know who you are, miss, but your offer to help us if the king, if Mr. Grant couldn't, 
That's kind. Oh, that's right. This is Miss Gordon, my fiancé. Pleased to meet you. And thank you for taking care of the lump on my head. Just be sure to put some ice on it when you get home. Yeah, I, I will. And thank you again. In a minute, I will show you out. The poor things. You know, they don't even look like revolutionaries. They don't need to. The thing they've got going for them is that the Grand Domirsky really don't care about politics. Well, we could have stood them off, you know, if, if Queen Beatrice had locked up the ammunition. That is the last reference to the past that anyone will make. Minabai, is there anything to eat? Shall I warm up the stew? Absolutely not. Alfred, uh, what he means, Minabai, is you shouldn't have to cook at this time of night. Oh, I know, there's a fried chicken place on the corner. I'll treat if the general and the baron wouldn't mind. You don't need me, Brontoslav. I'll stay here. Go with him, Artigorsk. While you're gone, I'll make coffee. I'll be in the kitchen if anybody needs me. Oh. Regret not being a queen? I'm sure. <laughs> it was a little shaky there when they hailed you as Queen Jill. For a minute, I thought it might be fun to be king with you beside me. I fell in love with an insurance man. That'll be enough to go on with. You promise? I swear. All right. Hand me that little red leather book there, and we'll swear together. Now, you hold one end, and I'll hold the other, okay? Repeat after me. I, Alfred Grant, and... I, Jill Gordon. ...do solemnly swear that we will never regret the throne of Grandomir. Never regret the throne of Grandomir. But we'll live happily ever after as plain Mr. and Mrs. Grant. Plain Mr. and Mrs. Grant. <laughs> Alfred, this is your rape book. You made me swear on your rape book. Why not? It's the insurance man's Bible. Are we married now? Just engaged for now. But when we get our chicks out of the nest... Chicks? Brontoslav et al. Unless you want them to live with us... Well, things off. I'll take them into the kitchen while you set the table after course. Is there uh, more coffee, Minibai? Right away, you're... <laughs> Alfred. Oh, this registered letter came for you last week. I don't know how I forgot to give it to you. Well, it's from Grandomir. It's Thalia's handwriting. Who's Thalia? My sister. She stayed behind to join the revolution. What an interesting family I'm joining. Read it to us, Alfred. The princess was always interested in politics. I heard that she financed the revolution by stealing the royal stamp album. Will I get a chance to meet her? <laughs> I hope so. Uh, this is what she says. Dearest Alfred, it's so nice to know that you're doing well in America. Since you left Grandomir in such a hurry, I took the liberty of signing your name to a formal declaration of abdication. Now you can't be king even after Daddy dies. She's got her nerve. Oh, it gets better. She says, I must warn you that Petrogny and Zerogorsk are on their way to America to steal the crown jewels. But you mustn't let them have them. Send them straight to me. What does she want with them? You'll find out in a minute. Back to the letter. I haven't had any luck liberating the women of Grandamere, so the other morning I reinstituted the monarchy. What? That's what she says. Reinstituted the monarchy, and I plan to be crowned just as soon as you can get the jewels and robes to me. <laughs> no question about it. I have to meet her. Next paragraph. Do you remember Count Milo Miloslav? I've decided to make him my consort. We'll be married immediately after my coronation so that the same celebration will do for both. She's so practical, just like her mother. Let me finish, please. By the way, if you do see Petrogny, tell him that I stood up to Grivogny and the press is running right now. Would you like some first-day covers with my picture on them to remember me by? Your affectionate sister, Thalia the First Grandamir. What a homecoming for Petrogny and Zirogorsk. I pity them all over again. Oh, I never thought I'd see the day I sympathize with Petrogny. Oh, he'll be much happier in the library. I shouldn't have left it in the first place. And, uh, by the way, if Thalia's smart, she'll have an army again. That's right. And if she has an army, she will need a general. And an equity. And, uh, and a valet. Milo Miloslav will. No, I never liked him. Many by, please don't go. Alfred needs a valet. Me? Why? Well, maybe I should say you need this valet. Many by's loyalty is to you personally. And if we both work, and I think it's a good idea, we'll need somebody to keep the house. And do the cooking. Not the cooking. Well, uh, we'll work it out. Sure we will. I'll write to Thalia and congratulate her. While I'm at it, I'll recommend a general and an equerry. Now, if you will fill your cups, we'll drink our coffee standing. Go 
God save Queen Thalia the first Grand Amir. God, God save, save her. her. May her reign be long. God and St. Alfred for the Grand Amirs. God and St. Alfred for the Grand Amirs. Oh, Grand Amir. Fair Grand Amir. Be over you and heaven. Her valley to and river blue. In a fair and cloudless weather. Dear Grand Amir, our native land. We will forever cherish. Ever fold the post till life shall close. Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. The Crown Jewels of Grand Omir was written by Gene O'Brien, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Andy Griffith. Our stars were Stephen Markle and Joan McCall. Featured in the cast were Hans Conried, Shepard Menken, Don Diamond, Sidney Swire, Marvin Miller, and Jack Crucian. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. 24 hours a day of great music and more. News, features, sports from FM 103. KMOX FM, St. Louis. KMOX FM. And now, KMOX FM News with Donna Michaels. Good evening. White House News Secretary Jody Powell says President Carter received offers of resignation today from his entire cabinet and senior White House staff members. A White House official who asked not to be identified was asked if Carter had solicited the resignation and dodging the question replied, they were offered. Asked why at least a couple dozen top people in government would be moved simultaneously to offer to quit without prodding. The official responded, we felt it to be an appropriate step to take at this time. The White House Assassinations Committee has released the final report on its probe into the deaths of President Kennedy and civil rights leader Martin Luther King. The report concludes that both probably were victims of murder conspiracies. An Associated Press NBC News poll shows the public agrees with President Carter that the nation faces a crisis of confidence. And 64% of the nearly 800 Americans polled say the president's leadership has been weak. Diplomatic sources say newly appointed Nicaragua President Francisco Urcujo plans to remain in the post until 1981, and government troops are reported engaged in battles with the Sandinista rebels in several Nicaraguan towns. Federal Reserve Board Chairman G. William Miller says the coming recession is likely to be worse than the Carter administration has predicted. He says unemployment could reach 8.25% next year, compared to the administration's forecast of 6.9%. Locally, federal officials say four men have been arrested and indicted on charges of conspiring to smuggle 200 pounds of cocaine into the United States. The suspects are identified as James Herman of Bridgeton, James Fever and Brian Brinker of Overland, and Robert Beckman of New Florence. Federal officials say the four were arrested yesterday on charges returned last week by a grand jury in Macon, Georgia. They are being held on $1 million bonds each. St. Louis County Supervisor Gene McNary is recommending a $50,000 study for planned expansion of the government center in Clayton. The study would focus on the needs of the county administrative offices and court and police facilities through 1980. Money for the study would come from the county's emergency fund. Still no settlement in the nationwide strike at the Westinghouse Corporation. Two plants in the St. Louis area are affected by the walkout of electrical workers. The main barrier to settlement is wages and fringe benefits. However, a St. Louis company spokesman says all local issues have been resolved. Tickets are up at both the South Band of Enter and Craig Road plants. Illinois Gasoline Dealers Association members may ignore a federal order to post profit margins publicly. The head of the IGDA, Robert Jacobs, says the members are happy to receive added profits, but appalled at having to post those profits for the public to see. Jacobs says the dealers are due for an increase in profit margins since the last was in 1973 following the Arab oil embargo. 
Another lawsuit has resulted from last January's toxic chemical spill in Sturgeon, Missouri. A Sturgeon couple, alleging vapors from the spill caused the death of their unborn child, filed suit today for more than $43 million. The action is the sixth lawsuit over the spill. Last January, a tank car of a freight derailed, spilling the caustic chemical along the tracks, forcing evacuation of the town's 1,000 residents. In St. Louis area weather, mostly clear and cooler tonight, the low in the lower 60s. For tomorrow, sunny and pleasant, the high in the low 80s. Then tomorrow night, the low around 60. And for Thursday, sunny and the high once again in the 80s. That's KMOX FM News. I'm Donna Michael. Mm-hmm.